cute. I look cute with What's my that? little feather. I just found a blue jay feather. This is like their central part of their tail feather. Oh. And I asked Sonner to put it in my cap. I had a feather in my cap here, but I think it fell out at some point. So this is my new feather. <laughs> it used to be just lawn when I moved in here. Well, we're looking to eradicate our lawn as well, and, so. And I planted all these trees and even that one. Did you plant trees in order to get shade to yes. grow hostas? Yes, uh, <laughs> pretty much. That's so I, I never thought it would go to, never plan to go to this extent. I yeah, just, we never do plan, do no. we? <laughs> but I've, I've been here since 1976. Yeah, so a lot so. of room to play and to grow. Yeah, since I've lived, well, lived here, I just started trying to grow things. Yeah. And a lot, of, a lot of it was a failure, and hostas is the one thing that wasn't a failure. They're easy. What did you What did you try to grow before hostas? Roses, for one Roses. thing. Roses, OK. Mm -hmm. And so it, was, it just wasn't wasn't in the cards then. Yeah, they just didn't do well. There have yeah. been other things, but I, I don't You, you could have been a rose guy. Yeah. <laughs> I went, there's a, a local garden tour they hold every year, and I just, I went to one of those, I don't know when, back in the 80s, I guess, and there was an ad in there for uh, someone who grew hostas and sold mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. and they happened to live just over the hill. Mm -hmm. It's a, on Death Valley Road, if you can believe. Well, I mean, it's really interesting names around yeah. here. <laughs> and I knew the road was there, but yeah. I'd never been on it, and it's yeah. just not a half a mile from my house. So I, so yeah. I went down, I met this guy, and bought some hostas from them. And you planted them, and they yeah. thrived. They thrived. Oh yeah. my god, amazing. Here comes Laura. Here's Laura. <laughs> Laura, by the way, um, set the, the, this whole interview up. <laughs> Yeah, well, Laura's my niece. Bob's just going along for the ride here. <laughs> Hi, Laura. <laughs> Good, how are you doing? We already started filming. We got here a little early. <laughs> I was like, Did Laura set you up to this? He's like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, they got here before me. Obviously, when you first came and planted the trees, they weren't uh, shading much of the area first. So like, what f came first, the hosta or the trees? There were some hostas over on the side, you know, okay. where the house yeah. showed some shade, and yeah. that, that, old, that old lilac there, that was there. That is a big lilac. <laughs> and there's another lilac on that corner, yeah. and they're the only two trees that were here. Yeah. Were you kind of like a, a hosta species guy, or were you really into the cultivars? Well, everything. Everything, there, okay. There are, there's an area up there around that lilac that are yeah. all, all species. Okay. And how many species of hostas are there? There's not too many, right? I think it's in the 40s. In the 40s, yeah. And then everything, and- There are arguments about some things, whether it's I'm species sure, or not. I'm sure, you know, yeah. at, when you really cr like cut hairs, you know, yeah. down to any probably plant at the end of the day. There's so many cultivars of hostas. I mean, I saw, see that you have tags mm -hmm. on each one because this is a world unbeknownst to me because I am, I've never d dived deeply into hostas right. in the way that you have, but I, I mean, how do you even keep track? Because they're, they're easily cultivated and, and they're popularly cultivated. Yeah, there are thousands, yeah. but, but there aren't that many unique ones. Because some look like the others. So some are, yeah. they're identical. Yeah. They say they are, but they are. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> the way it works, if someone finds a new hosta, as in it comes up from seed, mm -hmm. it's different from the ones around it, mm -hmm. or sometimes a hosta will send out a, a piece that's mm -hmm. different called a sport. Yeah. They can take that hosta, give it a name, register it in its new hosta, but it might not be different at all. Right. All derive from the species, the 40 or so species, mm -hmm. and, but the species have no, they're just green. Yeah. Or, well, or blue, but blue, blue hostas are really it's a green hosta that has some kind of a, a wax film on it. Like a glaucus like, kind of, like, yeah. Like back here is a real blue and one. Are and those, are those ones that could be particularly better in the sun, do you know? The blue ones don't do as well in the sun. Oh, really? That's interesting. Well, they'll thrive, but they won't be blue. The wax melts off and then they're green. I see, okay. And then some of these have, like, really large inflorescences. Some of them are really tiny, right? You know, these flowers? Yeah. And the bumblebees seem to love it. Yeah. A lot of people don't like that the flowers. They say they don't grow them for the flowers, but they're not bad. Yeah, I mean, they, they keep their flowers for quite some time, even up into winter, unless you're gonna be cutting them off, right? Right. Yeah. 
And the flowers are all, they all range from white to purple and some, some shade in between. So what are some of your favorite cultivars or species? Take us through some of the ones one that of my, you... One of my more favorite ones right there, Guardian Angel. And what is it about this one? I mean, it, the coloration is gorgeous. The color, yeah. the size. These leaves almost look quilted. Yeah, it's actually, it came from Blue Angel. I mean, it's a... So that was a sport from Somebody the at some angel. time got a spore of Blue Angel and created a Guardian Angel. And that is different enough, obviously, then to say yeah. like, hey, that is I mean, a it is unique. I've, yeah. I haven't seen any other like it. And when you get a hosta, do you only get one of a kind or do you try to plant, if you really like this one, do you have it elsewhere? No, on I only have one. You only have one. I've got somewhere 540 some and they're all different. Well, not different names at least. And yeah. They might actually not actually be different. Now. Where do hostas come from? Because it's more of like an Asian variety pl yeah, plant, Yeah, most of them right? are from Japan, a few from China, and a few from Korea. And then this one's kind of interesting over here, the small one. Is this like one of the miniature versions, or? Yeah, that's, uh, that, that, I don't think it gets probably a whole lot larger. Yeah. Because it's been there quite a while. Because there are many hostas, no? Oh yeah. Yeah. I've got a few over on the side. Okay. I tend to stay away from the minis, but. Is there a reason for that? They get they, lost in with the other hostas. Yeah, and you kind of <laughs> you kind of lose them. They go away. Yeah. I mean, you have plenty of more space for hostas. So, do you plan on continually getting them, or you kind of feel like I'm I'm done? I haven't done much this year. Yeah. I've done, I haven't done as much in the last couple of years. Yeah. But, but I'm not done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Never done. But I've gotten to the point where I got to really like something to buy it. Where for a while there, I, if, it, if it was different name I bought it. Right, okay. So you've reached the point where you're like, I'm at capacity. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't really speak right. to me, I don't need it. And, and on the, the spacing, I mean, you, I move them. They're easy to move. Oh, that's interesting. Just dig it up, yeah. put a hole somewhere else, put it back in. Yeah, and... because it's a Stoloniferous or Rhizomatis, it's probably more at the surface anyway. Yeah, you don't have to go down very deep. And then how have you cared for them? I know they're kind of like one of the easy plants, especially if you have shade people naturally just tend to go towards a hosta. Mm -hmm. But what are some of the care tips and what are some of the challenges that you might have with well, hostas? There isn't much to care for them. <laughs> the, the challenges are basically deer and slugs. Because they're edible. Have you ever eaten your hostas? No. No. It's only for ornamental value. Yeah. But they are, like all the parts are pretty much edible, right? Oh yeah, deer yeah. will eat them right to the ground. Yeah. And, and deer love them. And People ask me, how do I keep the deer away? And it's hard to, hard to answer that. I don't really yeah. do much. Yeah. Maybe it's just because you have so many yeah. of them. I use a fertilizer that supposedly repels deer, okay. but whether how much it really works, I don't right. know. Right, right. Now this one feels a little different to me. Just the, it's a, a nice darker flower. Yeah, that's maraschino cherry is the name of it. And yeah. I, I, Assume it was named because of the flower, right. the, the darker color. And now these are really white, the variegation. Is there anything that you need to kind of keep in mind when you have like more white ones? You gotta keep them out of the sun, they'll burn up. And do you find that the white leaves die really quickly and they have to rely on their like green sisters to pull the... Kind of the way they, they work. Usually the white ones turn green during mm -hmm. the season, and I think it's because if they didn't, they would die off because right. they don't, not enough chlorophyll, they don't build enough in the roots for the next year. Right, and then some of these that are a little bit more lime green, mm -hmm. um, I mean, you kind of have them all planted in kind of the same, mm -hmm. I'd imagine you get the same care, so it almost doesn't matter. This one has to be oh, yeah, shaded a bit more. Just where you put yeah. them. Like this one called fragrant bouquet, and that's because the flowers are fragrant. Yeah. Which couldn't prove it by me, but they say they're <laughs> fragrant. Tickle me pink, does it get pink flowers or? Yeah. Yeah. I believe so. <laughs> now this one's kind of unique because it has like this uh, pleating in, mm -hmm. in both both sections and right. it's almost like a cup. 
Black Hills. Okay. So you said your first one is over here somewhere? First one's right back there, Elderbrook. Elderbrook. Uh, it's always been there, but but this sunroom wasn't here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's so been the... built since that was, this, this was a rock garden through here. And what do you think it is about hostas that make them thrive in shade and, and be so heavy in foliage still? I don't really know. Yeah. And they, they thrive in, you say they, th they thrive in shade, but they yeah. need light. If you put them in real deep shade, like some of mine are, they don't, yeah. they don't grow as well. They don't get as large. Right. Do they flower in deep shade? Can't think. I really don't, never thought about it. I yeah. believe they still do, maybe not the same. Yeah. Now, when I look at hostas, they kind of have this kind of circular mm -hmm. uh, planting structure, but they are, um, in most cases, I think like rhizomatis or stoloniferous, so they spread, but they kind of keep this clumpy kind of look as they, they age. Yeah. Yeah, so they're easily contained. Yeah, they don't really spread so much as they'll, I mean, they'll be another plant. Yeah. They'll be alongside it. I think I can select these. See, there's several plants in there now. Right, okay, and so you can easily divide these yeah, then. Easily, yeah. Yeah. You can you can dig up the whole plant and divide them up and yeah. do whatever you want. I mean, what's nice about it is I think like when I think of hostas, um, you know, they're a non-native species, a great shade species, but in some cases, sometimes those species will spread and then they become invasive. Mm -hmm. But I feel like ho people have had hostas forever and they've never yeah, they proven don't... to move out into yeah. the, the wild. This looks like a weeping red bud. Exactly. Is that right? Yep. That's and nice... I usually trim it and this year I haven't. That is a nice specimen though. I usually trim it so that it's, you can actually see under it. But, yeah. But this year I've just let it grow. Not for, because I chose to do that just because I didn't get around to doing anything. And do you think this is more like slug damage or yep. what would you think? Okay. That's probably slug. Yeah. And then how do you keep your slugs at bay? Do you even try? Do you put like a little beer? I've tried over the years, can? but I don't do anything anymore. Yeah. If I if I get a spot where it looks like there's a lot, I throw some slug bait down. Yeah. But... I feel like you have enough hostas to kind of like feed the slugs and yeah. be okay with it. It's kind of the same with the deer. I mean, yeah. I lose, I lose a few each year. A deer will come through and eat a couple, but they yeah. usually don't eat it entirely and they always come back. Well, you still have, the, I guess, the underground system, right? So yeah. they'll pop back. Might be one way to kind of prune it, I guess. I haven't seen much deer damage at all this year. Invincible. Yep. Tiny leaves. Supposedly, it'll take any, you can grow that out in the sun. And, that, and it should be full, fine. Full sun, yeah. yeah. I guess why they gave it that name. And that was a sunny spot at one time. Yeah. This tree I wasn't mean, there. <laughs> obviously, trees grow and then... <laughs> but that's kind of cool because then um, as you, as your trees grow, you actually don't have to totally change out your flower bed because it's something that could mm -hmm. handle shade. So what's the optimum amount of like light versus shade that you should give most hostas? From your experience. I don't know if there's an optimum. Probably the most desirable, they say, is uh, morning sun and yeah. then shade in the midday. And so, like, yeah, intense sunlight during sun the and, west. And sun in, you know, in the evening is fine, too, yeah. but, but to avoid the midday sun. Right. And so when you see... That's, that's on stage. On stage, okay. I guess somebody thought that kind of looked like a stage, the, the lines, like <laughs> yeah. a wooden, I don't know. Some of the names are, some of them you can figure out where it came from and a lot of them don't make any sense. And do you have like a preference for ones that are like dark green or blue or variegated and creamy? Variegated ones are probably the most interesting. Most coveted. This cherry tree, this is a group, these are all, they're tiaras, golden tiara, platinum tiara, emerald tiara, grand tiara. And they were named tiara because of the, the ring around the leaf. 
grand prize is actually part of the Tierra family, but okay. somebody named it different. These look like they're under your deck, so they have pr protection, but they, they, they kind of seem sun. a little fuller. Yeah. yeah. This, most of these, in fact, everything in the first two, two rows is one family of hostas. These are my favorites. They all come from this one. And what's that one? Striptease. Oh, striptease. And it's because of that little white strip you see on, on some of the leaves between the dark green and light green. I mean, that's what they say, but. Yeah. <laughs> and if you look at the names of the other ones, a lot of them have Oh, similar. Interesting like, names. Cabaret, obscene gesture. White bikini, high white fashion. White bikini, high fashion, okay. Lady Godiva. <laughs> Gypsy rose. Yeah. Yellow polka dot bikini. Silver Eagle is interesting because it's the two colors are almost the same. Oh yeah! It's almost like a almost a blue in the middle and just a little and, and little, the little white tickle line. Of white, yeah. This one's pretty interesting yep. too. What's that one? Kiwi Full Monty. Kiwi Full Monty. Kiwi is because it it comes from uh, New Zealand. New Zealand, okay. It's not, I mean not because of that, but there's a nursery in New Zealand that uses the name kiwi. Yeah. So your favorite ones you gave, have given the best conditions, you yeah. think? Okay. And I, a few years ago, maybe four years ago or so, I saw in a magazine a list of some of these. I didn't know there were so many. Yeah. I said, well, wait a minute. I went through it. I have a lot of these. I had maybe 10 or 12 of them scattered all around. So I dug them all up and moved them all in here. Well, I think this is a, a smart place in general of where to plant something because mm -hmm. here you have an elevated porch, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, this is not something where you'd probably be hanging out in, right? right. So it's, it's actually really good use of making, yeah. beautifying a space, I suppose. This, that is, this be... is one of the first places that I had a lot of hostas. I, mean, yeah. I had a few in the gardens out front, and then I was looking for someplace else. This used to be a catch-all up under here, and it was just full of junk. Yeah. I said, okay, we're gonna clear it all out, we'll plant hostas under there. It's, it's so smart mm -hmm. because it's like, how do you, when we think of landscaping, we think of like, okay, what can I create like an island planting out in my mm -hmm. lawn or whatever, with like a perennial border. Um, but here, really difficult space to kind of work with and mm -hmm. it's a perfect plant for this space. And a little grandpa's garden sign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, was a, that was a Christmas present a couple years ago. This one, High yeah. fashion over here. It's that dark green one with a white center. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, it was last year, it put out a, we call it a sport, mm -hmm. a separate section that was different. Oh, really? So I dug it out and I planted it right there. Uh huh. Oh, okay, that one with the- Yeah, that the, little one there, yeah. with the three leaves. And I'm look, see what it is. It looks like it's just gonna be the same as striptease. Right. It just, it just reverted to the old. Right, okay. But so somebody could take that and, and, and give it a it. name and register it and it's yeah. a new hosta, but it you, might not be different. You, you could have done it. I could. And you could have come with, up with a really yeah. fancy name. <laughs> but unless it, as it gets older, unless it's actually different. It know. could have been called Grandpa's Girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now that's a funky one. That's like all frizzle, like yeah. a frizzle sizzle. Praying hands. Hmm, good name. Yeah, that one is, somebody put some thought into that name. Yeah. And then these are also pretty full. The bumblebees love them. Yes. Which is really good to see, because sometimes mm -hmm. you have, a, when you have a non-native plant or whatever, not all the times, like I feel like a lot of non-native plants are not browsed by deer or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Not a good pollinator plant, but in this case, it's edible. So it does kind of quote unquote feed the wildlife for better or for worse. And it's a great pollinator plant for bumblebees. Now the, this area in here gets a little too much sun and they, they get a little burnout. I was seeing that some of these are yeah. probably a little bleached, right? Yep. 
So would you go in here and make the effort to be like, okay, it's not the most optimal place for this one. Would you eventually just kind of dig them out and say, okay. In fact, that one, I just moved there this year and just to see if it would do well there. Yeah. I won't know until next year. But... Right, it takes a while for them to yeah. Yeah, acclimate. These these three here are extremely hardy and they, they, they look really nice in the spring, mm -hmm. but as the summer goes on, they get a little burn out. But... When do the flowers start to really fade? Well, some of them are starting now. Yeah. So. But when do they start? Th mm -hmm. When do they start up? Is it like June, and then they start to fade, and maybe like well, August, it, September? In June, they probably haven't even flowered yet. Okay. So it's a good month of flowering then, oh, yeah. more or less. Are there any ones that you find that are like later bloomers than others? Yeah, definitely. There's okay. Some that haven't bloomed yet. Yeah. It's kind of got a unique name. It's called Neat and Tidy. And it's anything but. <laughs> but. Most hostas are pretty much round and they make a nice shape. Mm -hmm. That one doesn't. So do you think um, anybody else in the area started to pick up some hostas after you started going whole hog on your hostas? Well, I'm sure there are people around, but I don't, yeah. don't, I don't think there's anyone that has anything like this. <laughs> I've gone to a lot of garden tours and a lot of hostas, but nothing. Definitely, I mean, there's one nursery here uh, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. But I, w I went here, well, it was probably six, seven years ago, mm -hmm. and I was just looking around, and then somebody came out and was asking, you know, I need any help, and I just started talking about hostas. I like to grow hostas. And they started telling me about, well, yeah, there's this guy around here somewhere that has over 400 varieties. <laughs> they started telling me about me. <laughs> <laughs> you became like this folklore. And then I, fi I figured out who it was that had talked to, that had talked to I him. see. Somebody, okay. I, somebody I worked with. Well, it's no help when you go to a nursery mm -hmm. that sells hostas and you find out that you have more hostas than that nursery. Well, that's, that's the case in <laughs> all of them around here. <laughs> and there, there aren't, the, the best nurseries, at least in this area, have all closed over the last few years. Yeah, that's a shame. Yeah, I think it's because of Lowe's and... Yeah, Home Depot. Home Depot. Is, yeah, even though they don't have any, like, the greatest varieties either. No. You know? And also people are getting older. Like, we see um, a, a number of the nurseries in our area that have mm -hmm. closed, and they're just retiring, yeah. you know, and no one else wants to take on the business. Where's, where's your area? In the Finger Lakes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we're, yeah. we're not far from the Finger Lakes. No, here. not far at all. We're actually on the way there after, yeah. after this. This one's a really lovely one. Mm -hmm. I like the shape and the compactness of it and, and the smallness of the leaf. So what are some of, I, I'd love to go and actually see, and I don't want to rush through it, but I'd love to go actually see some of the species. Okay. You know, because that, that. that gives us like, that'll also give me a sense of, um, you know, what the different species look like. Cause I'm not, I'm no hosta expert mm -hmm. for, for real. That one's huge too. Look at that. Oh yeah. That's M millennium. Millennium? Mm -hmm. Oh, I've seen this in Botanic Gardens. I think that's a, quite a popular one. Yeah. Now, if you want to see some of, there's some minis in here that we can get to pretty oh, easily. Oh, yeah, nice. There's some in here, this is oh, the- Oh, look how tiny. The mouse ears family. Oh Boom, Boom mouse ears was the first one. And there have been a lot Are of them. Since it, no, it's fine. There's, okay. a there's a path there. <laughs> They look like uh, little terrarium plants. Mm -hmm. And this one here, which has nothing to do with the mouse ears, is just one of my favorite hostas. And why is that? Is it the roundness of the leaf or the, the, the coloration? It's, it's different, yeah. yeah. The roundness of the leaf, the, the colors, is it, there's nothing else like it. Yeah. Warwick Comet. Oh, I guess you could say the, the coloration looks a little like a comet, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. And there's a couple of little minis over here. You have some woodruff planted under here. No, oh, right? that's... <laughs> some friend gave me some of that years ago, and it's... They spread. I think it's I yank a lot of it out every year. I think it's Gallium odorata, but it's another, yeah. like, understory plant that mm -hmm. does spread. And your little Acer here. Yeah. Say. Yep. Yeah, and, this has been here a long time. For and all this these. one's almost, like, sprinkled. It's kind of, like, white yep, sprinkles. Yep, that's a different elecon fog. And that's, I planted London fog in front of it. Just, that's, a, that's a good name for it because it's misty, it's kind of foggy. It's one right behind you. It's called Tall Boy. And, and the racemes get very long, yeah. It's because of the, the flower escapes. Yeah.
mountain snow. I guess somebody thought it looked like snow on a mountain, I suppose. Oh, yeah. So how many of the species do you have? I know that the species kind of move back and forth, so they're probably like yeah, 40, uh, 46, 47, 48. I might have 25 or 30. Emperor's Wu there is one of the biggest ones. Wow. Well, the species are all around the lilacs, all in here. There's a lot of small ones in here, and they're actually planted in pots. I see, okay. Why do you keep these in pots now? Keep the lilac roots out of them. I see, okay. Gives them, they grow a little better if they don't get... Competition with the competition lilacs. Competition with the lilac, yeah. Okay. Is this the lilac? No, that's nope. a hydrangea. This is a lilac. Oh, the big <laughs> It's not really big. Very old. Yeah. Some, I mean... This, this tree, lilac, was here when I moved in here in 76, so... Um, amazing. I mean, some of the lilac lilacs that they have now will only grow up to like four to six mm -hmm. feet, so they've gotten smaller and smaller for people's backyards. Mm -hmm. So this is like Hosta Minor and Hosta mm -hmm. Clavada. Yeah. Hosta venusa, and and they when I'm looking at these they they don't have huge leaves, or are there some that have more robust leaves that they've then cultivated from that? Yeah, the, okay. probably the one in front of you there. That that's probably one of the bigger ones. And what what would be that one? Do you know the name of that oh, one? Oh, the, the, you know, the signs on the other side. Oh, I, okay. I don't recall at the moment. Yeah, it's on the other side. Ventricosa is one of the larger ones. And really purple flowers. Yeah. I mean, th these flowers are absolutely gorgeous. I don't know. I mean, the, yeah. the, they're tubular. They're great pollinator plants. I don't know what people's problems are about. <laughs> but it's nice to know that like people um, appreciate plants for their foliage, because oftentimes it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. People go for the flowers, and they're not attracted to the fact that the foliage, that they, they don't care for the subtlety of it. Yeah, now I can see with the species. Here we go. Plantagenia. Yeah. So it's like a plantain leaf, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the name of hostas is plantain lily. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, and it's, is it related to, it's, it must be then related to asparagus, like the asparagus family. Like a lot of lilies are in asparagus. Yeah, okay. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah, I guess it would be. Because I know people prepare the young shoots almost as if it were like an asparagus. Mm. So you'd have to try. I can't believe you've never eaten your children. Mm. <laughs> well, I'm not a vegetarian. <laughs> but you eat vegetables. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I used to grow asparagus. You, you strictly only eat meat. <laughs> <laughs> I know, exactly. <laughs> So basically, what I'm seeing is that most of the species have, they're all green. Yep. And then, They're but, all green, all different s shapes, and some of, them are, some of them have got a little bit bluish, but not much, like this one, maybe a little bit. Yeah, and then these are really lanceolate yeah. kind of leaves. Now, tell me about watering versus dry. I mean, I'm assuming because they're a little bit more associated with a shade plant, they like a little moisture conditions. But is that true? Uh, Can they dry I, Well, I don't water them. <laughs> yeah, you don't water them. They're just, you just plant them in the ground and right. then away they um, go. Well, I might water them when I plant one. I might yeah. water it, but that's, that's it. That's it? That's it. And so you really like the low maintenance aspect of it that's, as well. Yeah. That's mainly why I have hostas, I yeah. think. It's, it's, it's what thri thrived on neglect, I guess is the term. Yeah, <laughs> thrived in benign neglect. I don't know, I think these are some of my favorite with the really textural leaves. Mm -hmm. Cause that looks like it's actually knitted. I don't even remember the name of that one. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, it um, says Deep Blue Sea. Deep blue sea. <laughs> and then this really reminds me more of like a, um, like a peace lily leaf, like a spathophyllum, the way that it's mm -hmm. structured. And here are some pretty substantial ones, like right next to the house. These 
These three have been here for 25 years, I would guess. And have you ever divided them, or is that kind of like their 25-year mark size? I don't believe I divided any of those. Yeah. Well, I think this gives really, you know, somebody a, a very good sense about, you know, after 25 years, it still stays mm -hmm. relatively contained. And this is a big-leaved variety. Mm -hmm. And some of those small ones that we saw are really quite tiny and minute. And if you had only a tiny little garden, like a miniature garden, you could handle planting those. Sure. And if you have a shady garden, most people are like, oh, I can't plant in shade. Maybe you're not gonna be planting like vegetables, but in some cases, this is a ve vegetable. This is like an Asian vegetable. Mm -hmm. So you could technically harvest them, but. Yeah, I used, um, to, I used to have a vegetable garden. I haven't had that in years, but yeah. keep this up. More maintenance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And way, is, way too much maintenance. And this is a garden that could age with you, mm -hmm. which is also really nice. Well, this is really lovely. It's nice to see such a range of pastas, and it gives us an idea that when you have a very shaded area, even though you said it needs some sun for mm -hmm. sure, the early morning sun is the best, that you could grow such large foliage plants and very well and very easily. If you had some hostas that were your favorite, let us know in the comments below. And in the meantime, if you've been enjoying these videos, consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. We're actually reinvesting 10% of our Google AdSense proceeds on the Flock Finger Lakes channel back into the community here. So your support goes a long way. See you in the next video.